Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Saturday, November 21st at 11.30 p.m. Mountain Time 2020. The models are in. Well, and they're not funny. They're filled with snow in the West and the Northeast and all of Canada. And the big story, well, it's the snow. Next Pacific storm favors snow in the Rockies and the upper Midwest. Keep calm. It's boom time. And we're off. Yes, snow to clip Michigan on Sunday. See where the snow line will make roads slick. Basically from Saginaw and Bad Axe straight down through your Brenton. Yeah, I said it. Heads up. Sunday night through Tuesday, following a week or more of dry weather, I have good news. There is moderate or significant snowstorm in the forecast. The storm in the southern mountains, temperatures will be warm and the snow could be around 10,000 feet but the ski resorts are above that. Then from Monday, midday, through Tuesday, midday, snow will spread across most or all of the other mountains and temperatures will become colder and the snow will become powder. Louder with Crowder. The latest multi-model forecast from the University of Utah shows a good chance of 10 inches of accumulation in the southern mountains just on this Monday, Tuesday pump. Here's your Friday, Saturday bump followed by the Monday-Tuesday pump. Keep calm. It's shroom time. <laughs> no, it isn't. But we can go to the models, and let's just go through the U.S. That's the best here. Here's your Monday. Here's your Tuesday, which is your lose day in Colorado. That's my day. Look at that. Boom. Heavy snow in the southern mountains up to 24 inches, potentially. And then we have a little blast from the past. Like I predicted earlier, by Monday, there's going to be snow moving into your uh, forecast window in the northeast like a beast. Secondary system moving through midweek here, Wednesday, Thursday, and another pump to the west. Uh, that will be the best. And this is going to be coming on the heels of Thanksgiving. So if you're planning Thanksgiving forecasts, well, in the west, it's going to be a little snowy and a little blowy. Let's move on to Europe, because we seldom do that, just for the hell of it. Take a look at the snow in Finland. Yeah, it's very rare. But the big winner is Norway, picking up three to five feet of snow on the coast. And then even Greta's boyhood home is picking up a little light dusting in her region. And it, that's going to ever increase. But the big winner down here, take a look at the chicken dinner. That is Eastern Turkey and Iran, right on the border. And they're even calling for snow in Israel. But that is not the most unique snow. Take a look at North Africa. Light snow in the Alps, but heavy snow in Africa. Welcome to the Grand Solar Minimum. Snow descends on Mount Hermon. Dozens rescued from floods across Israel. Dozens rescued in over 200 separate reported incidences or incidences, of flooding in major roads in Tel Aviv, Haifa, and Ness, however you say that, is underwater, literally. Yes, that's water and they're under it. Well, seismic update. There are quakes of note and we are in a seismic warning period for the next 24 to 48 hours. This is due to the coronal hole in the north of the sun coupling with us. And we should have expected some six magnitude or greater because we're in a drought and we did get a 6.1 in Chile. No one felt that. They're looking for 7.5 or greater to even feel it in that region. But we do have this boomer in the Mediterranean, 5.2 in, in offshore of Algeria. So it's getting queerier. There was a moderate up, uptick in the New Madrid 36 hours ago, and we're going to keep a close eye on that. So we're waiting for some more larger six magnitude quakes. It's my supposition that there'll be a six mag or greater popping off in Fiji and and potentially Indonesia in the next day or two. So keep a close eye. Worldwide Volcano News Update. We have a huge uptick. Not really. But we do have uh, a significant puff from Kluchiskov, which has been increasing and blowing. We've reported on that. Look at the ash in this region of Kamchatka. Hello, Kluchiskov, blowing again to 20,000 feet today. And White Island is still puffing. 
continuously ongoing low-level ash emissions and steam plume. Stay off the island, kids. Space weather news update. We can see from telemetry ghost x-ray flux in the last 24 to 36 hours, up, up, and away into the high B range. It is not falling below that, and it is putting out some blasts. Here you can see the Enlil spiral showing a CME blasting off just east and south of Earth. That's the yellow dot, the yellow knob right here. So we just, you know, we just scraped by on the side there. So heads up to that. And that 6.2, the kicking off was right here when that solar wind speed kicked up a notch, density pumped up a notch, the phi angle shifted real jiggy in a straight line I draw right here. That's the 6.2 mag. And we actually went up into geomagnetic instability during that event. The magneto, Graham, look at it, dropping way down here and then spiking up just moments ago. So keep a close eye on the seismics because things are getting jiggy on the sun. It's not that fun. We have two sunspots turning and facing Earth. 2783 in the next day or two is going to be directly facing Earth. <whistles> what does that mean? Well, it's already popped off some... B-class flares, and AR-2783 is now at 5% M-class, 1% X-flare, and we have two spots with 1% X-flare potential. So we're going to be keeping a close eye on the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere of the sun as we move forward. Greenland's glaciers could lose more ice than previously thought. Now, <coughs> here's where they get you. Greenland's gr glaciers are, is the ice sheet emanating off of the continent. The continent itself has been building ice for years. It has record ice on the continent. The surface mass budget is a little jiggy because people don't understand what that actually means. What it means is that Greenland's ice budget on the continent is building, and that's pushing glaciers ever further into the ocean. And of course, they're going to lose more ice as they extend further. It's called calving. It's part of glaciology and the study of geology in general. So the mainstream can report on something that's not significant based on epic amounts of land ice on Greenland pushing the glaciers further out and causing them to break down. That's going to be causing a salinity decrease in the oceans surrounding Greenland, driving that mechanism that causes ice ages or many ice ages in this case the shutdown of the uh, Atlantic flow and that Gulf Stream so we're going to be keep, keeping a close eye on that plus the Beaufort gyre could eject at any time from the Atlantic and well then this has hit the fan period let's check out some of the data Greenland now gaining two to three gigatons of ice in the last day gaining not losing. It hasn't lost ice at all since the turnaround in the cycle. Now, we had this dip down last year where it actually lost ice in the gain period, and the warmest were all over that. But right now, we do not have that scenario. So there are crickets from the sheeple. Oh, I think I hear Mary Greeley. <laughs> yeah, I think I did. Northwest Territories to suffer the coldest Colder than average winter, warns Environment and Climate Change Canada. Heads up, it's going to be chilly up in Canada. Take a look at this idiot walking with his head right beneath the ice of this high-tension power line. Yeah, I, I just don't get how stupid these people are. Russian power plant halts operation due to snow and ice, leaving 120,000 in the cold. Many dead or frozen. This guy almost got an arc right to the brain. It's insane. U.S. greenhouse gas emissions sees historic plummet. Well, if the CO2 is plummeting and the temperature is rising, I think some people should leave pause. Carbon dioxide emissions from U.S. economy are nosediving this year to a level not seen since 1983, which is before the global warming scare. That started in 86, by the way, in full force. That's when the uh, National Science Foundation was defunded, and we are now controlled by multinational corporations. Just five years later, I left academia. 
The steep drop is mostly a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, upending businesses as usual, and shutting down the CO2 paradigm. Now, CO2, the planet heating pollution, is on track to fall by 9.2%. But to be quite honest, CO2 is plant food, and it's literally going to choke out our forests, which have been greening for decades. Okay, so there's that. Wait a minute, let me switch that up. Because the good stuff is in. Boom! I feel like I just put on my tuxedo, to be quite honest. Tinfoilhat.co. Get your 5G. Now. And rest your head. Feels good to be in this hat. Now, the steep drop is most likely a result of COVID-19, but it doesn't matter. Because... No one can explain the discrepancies. Because as CO2 plummets, the climate does whatever it wants. It has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with the sun. Now, let's talk about some of the crazy crazy making across the world. Manitoba, this came out yesterday, bans in-store sales of non-essential items. We're right back at the rip. You can't buy fun stuff moving into the holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas. You can't buy any toys, no games, no puzzles, nothing that's non-essential, just food and medicine until December 11th in Manitoba, and you can't leave your house. Well, Either the Canadians in Manitoba are so compliant and such sheep that they comply to this, or they burn down the city halls and the government centers and loot and rob the stores. Either way, I'd be happy with it because this is total nonsense. This is a totalitarian government will over the people. And if the people don't rise up, well, the people will be locked up. That's just how it works in history. Now is the time for Americans to rebel against lockdowns, mass laws, and forced vaccinations, COVID pass, and other nonsense, other globalist outreaches. We learned decades ago that people in Florida cannot be voting for what we want in Colorado because they do not live here. And that's why we have states. And now we're trying to move to one world government It's almost the retardation of the population. One place where that's not happening is Denmark, where days ago the population came out and fought the powers that be against a mandatory vaccination law and won. Now, anyone's guess how that will move forward and how they will implement that plan in the future, but the people got their way and they did not pass that law. Well, I'm sure you've all heard of the big mink culling. 14 million minks now have a rare COVID uh, variety that can be passed to humans, which is in no scientific paper anywhere and can be proven by no one in any day. But the government took it upon themselves to say that all farmers have to kill all 14 million minks. And do you know what the farmers said? (laughs) Well, they said the government must resign and they can suck it. Thank God we have Denmark. Can you imagine Denmark is now the model country for the entire world to follow its policies? Who knew? I would never have guessed. But these farmers have got balls like steel, and they certainly don't have carbon dioxide scrubbers on their exhaust. I have a diesel tractor. It emits zero emissions because that's the way it has to be in the U.S. now. Look at these babies just burning that black smoke. Oh, those were the days which was just today, by the way. <clears throat> and the opinion of Christian Koshkreif is demonstrating against the government today. And I love these guys. These are hardworking farmers in Denmark shutting down the streets and spewing so much CO2 in the atmosphere that it should basically melt all of Denmark, which it hasn't. But the tractor shut down against the mink uh, apocalypse, shall we call it, is definitely heartwarming. So our prayers go out to Denmark and the people there that are actually reacting like humans in fighting the tyrannical systems uh, that are implementing these egregious laws. 
Why we're not burning government buildings in America is anyone's guess. But hopefully we get there in the coming weeks. Dear Joe Biden, you're killing me. And this is coming from Aaron Brockovich that voted for this schmuck, like all other environmentalists that didn't do their due diligence or their homework. A lot of people commenting on my videos like, hey, you want to save the bees, but you vote, you're supporting Trump. I'm like, yeah, it's the Democrat uh, cities and the Democrats that have banned uh, the necessary implements in the forest to prevent forest fires, to prevent your house from burning, to, to prevent almost all of the environmental issues that we're dealing with now. <clears throat> It's an oxymoron, I can tell you. I was duped by it 12 years ago. I considered myself a Democrat, an environmentalist, and a realist. And I wanted to end pollution, uh, to end multinational corporations destroying our planet. And guess who's part of that? The Democrats. They're 100% complicit in the destruction of your life, your civil liberties, your environment. And now they want to geoengineer uh, anyway. I don't even want to begin to tell you the disinformation and how twisted all of you dumb fucks are. But let's just get to one of the talking points and Leah and I will cover it all tomorrow or the next day in an exclusive expose on the dumbing down of humanity. Now, Joe Biden, according to the AP, is the president-elect, but hopefully the cracking gets unleashed but and, and all of his picks currently for his uh, cabinet moving forward are highly suspect. And Aaron Brockovich is just calling out on one pick. And here it is. Dare I say, I had hopes that this new administration would usher in the dawn of a new day. Yes, the Green New Deal that everyone was sucking at the teats for. But as picks for president-elect Joe Biden's Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, transition team were announced, Aaron Brockovich felt concerned and disheartened about, well, a chemical industry insider being on that list. In fact, Michael McCabe, the former employee of Biden and former deputy, he was the Deputy Environmental Protection Agency Administrator, later jumped ship to work as a consultant on communication strategy for DuPont. During a time when the chemical company was looking to fight regulations of their star chemical perfluoroglycanate, PFOA, also known as C8, this is the toxic man-made chemical that's used from everything from waterproof clothes, stain-resistant textiles and food packaging to nonstick pans. Now, the compound has been linked to lower fertility, cancer, liver damage, and a host of all other horrible shit that these multinational corporations fight to prevent you from knowing so that millions of people use it. They all die. They all go to the pharmaceutical and the hospital industry and they make them millions. It's a, it's a complicit, it's a backdoor deal. It's called the revolving door. I pat your back. You let my shit through. I make everyone sick and you cure them or keep them alive a little longer. That's the world you're living in. It's sick. If you're not considering opting out now, Listen, if you're over 50 and you have over 10 pharmaceuticals that you have to take every day, you have been duped because I'm there. And you know what I take every day? Nothing! Nothing from a pharmaceutical company. Nothing from a multinational industry. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Nor will I ever walk into a hospital until an ambulance drags me in an accidentally during an accident in a car or something like that. I will not walk into a hospital. If you have COVID-19 and you walk into a hospital, you are an idiot. You will get intubated and you will die there. If you have COVID-19, go home. Vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, yes. And, and remain calm. You will get better. You have a 99.95% .95 chance of doing that. Yes. So let's get back to uh, the former employee of Biden during the last administration who turned 
and worked as a communication strategy for DuPont during a time when the chemical POFA, known as CA8, the toxic man-made chemical, was used for everything. Well, he defended that. And now he's in charge of the EPA again, which is supposed to make your water and food safe. I mean, how fucking stupid are all of you people that are, hate supporters of the truth and, and you love supporting the globalist agenda to pollute you, to vaccinate you, and to steal your civil liberties, to monitor every single fart you make. You are the jokes of society. We're now laughing at you. And I guarantee in the next five or six years, the people on my side, which is now 50-50, will be well above your side. I'm going to go 90-10, and it's over, Johnny. Now, this smells of the dawn of the same old, same old. To quote the, the who, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Now, C8, the toxic man-made chemical, is used in everything from waterproof clothes, stain-resistant textiles, food packaging, and nonstick pans. The compound has been linked to lower fertility, cancer, and liver damage. The Guardian reported this week that Harvard School of Public Health professor Philip Gaujon, who studies environmental health, warns that PFAS chemicals, of which PFOA is one, might reduce the efficacy of a COVID-19 vaccine. So do you see how this is all a twisted fucktardia that you're now living? I do. And I'm putting it down. Did you pick it up? It should go without saying that someone who advised DuPont on how to avoid regulations is not someone who we want advising the new administration on how to keep us safe. <laughs> And you voted for this prick. I don't know, you dog pony soldier fucker. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, she smells good. God, this is so demonetized. Who were the Denisovians? Well, they probably didn't look like that. But if you just tap over here, you've heard of Neanderthals. And you might have heard of Australopithecus afarensis. An even more ancient ancestor to modern humans. But have you heard of the Denisovians? I'm telling you about it. Scientists didn't even know about this ancient hominid until a decade ago when DNA was sequenced from a finger bone found in Siberia. That's it. Aside from that finger bone, scientists offered, also discovered a few teeth and bone fragments. Did they? So far, all we really know about them is that they lived between 200,000 and 50,000 years ago, ending their life cycle right around the magnetic excursion at 42,000 years ago, which eliminated Neanderthal. And the area spanning from Siberia to Southeast Asia, these people lived, the Denisovians. So they must have known the Neanderthals, and they definitely banged Homo sapiens. Denisovian DNA can be found in some people's genomes, like Neanderthal DNA. Didn't I just say that? And Denisovians and Neanderthals interbred 100,000 years ago. Wow, it was like a big multi-species orgy in the middle of the Kalahari, according to fossil data. But not much else is known about them because their remains are so scarce. But we know they'd like to party. <laughs> Far from the Siberian cave where the first fossils were found, scientists recently discovered a Denisovian fossil in a cave in the Tibetan plateau. Yeah, they were Sherpas. The fossil's a jawbone, originally found in 1980, but was only recently that the DNA from the sample confirmed it belonged to Denisovian. Further research in the Tibetan cave revealed more DNA fragments that matched those found in the Siberian cave, suggesting these ancient humans were more geographically widespread than once thought. All alone, and I'm the only scientist on the fucking planet. Scientists wonder whether these ancient humans had special adaptations to help them live at such high altitudes. Hello! Scientists don't know a fucking thing. 
based on everything we've uncovered in four years on this channel. And here's good evidence. We're not alone. Mysterious object found in Utah during sheep count. Now, this is very telling. This is definitely alien in origin. A piece of sheet metal directly perpendicular to a slot where water runs out may have nothing to do with erosion. Wait a minute. That's exactly what it has to do with. This is set by, anyway. Nothing to see here. But there is something to see in Denmark. Did you know that 48 hours ago, Denmark prevented a mandatory vaccination law by coming out in force as activists into the streets? Yes! And now, yesterday, which is today, which is yesterday, huge tractor demonstration was launched to prevent the culling of 14 million minks in the country because it was not voted on democratically and it's based on no scientific information and only dogma. Denmark is the way. Did you ever think Denmark could save the entire planet? Well, neither did I. But they have shown us the way to eliminate forced uh, vaccine mandates and now a forced mandate to kill minks. We will not kill our farm animals without democratic vote. We will not take the vaccine unless we democratically vote on it and we will not comply with your nonsense and we will show up on their fucking tractors. Shit. I wish I was in Denmark because I'd pull my baby right up to these motherfuckers and stand strong with a bong inside the tractor. Anyway. So we talked about Brockovich. We talked about Denmark. We talked about the Denisovians. We talked about the fake thing, which is a piece of metal to split the runoff here to prevent erosion. Nothing to do with aliens. Now let's talk about Steve. I love that guy. He's always the guy at the party that everyone knows. Sometimes he has the good shit. But he's also the real weird green wisp here below the picket fence that's never been seen before. The green streak only lasts for 30 seconds, then it vanishes. It's almost like crack. It's whack. But what are they? Well, they are Steve. And that's as far as we'll go there. Once in a lifetime comet is visible now in the pre-dawn sky. Erasmus! This goes ba way back in history. Look at the pictures they're showing. Yeah, this is like hundreds of years. If you thought 2020 surprises were over, hold on. There's one more winging towards us before we can finally close and shred the year. The whole calendar year. But this one is a welcome surprise. It's a comet. Yes, because comets... Well, throughout the end of November, Comet C-2020 S3, or Erasmus, can be found low in the night sky over the southeast horizon. And if you know where to look for Venus, the third brightest light in the night sky. So if it's not the sun, if you're not looking at the moon, it's Venus. And just look right at 5 a.m. Right in this region, right of Venus, 5 degrees, is Erasmus. And you can kiss my asthmas. If you don't see it with your eyes, light pollution or haze could make this difficult. And if you have binoculars, well, strap those bitches on. Because that fuzzy, round, glowing haze to the right of Venus is a comet. Under good dark conditions, you should be able to spot a faint smudge of light, cotton-like ball against the night sky. And tell him Diamond sent you. Because <laughs> he did. 50 years ago, scientists named Earth's magnetic field as a suspect in extinctions. And just three years ago, Diamond started a channel on it. Well, here's more evidence to support your <whistles> scientific fetishes. Earth's magnetic field has a frequently reversed at intervals of 1 million to 100 million years. <laughs> Man, they're so far behind, it's unkind to even make fun of them. But what we did do is take a huge leap. Brighteon, Bitshoot, they can suck it. 
They're owned by humans that are taking huge amounts of profit on their platforms. BitChute has problems uploading videos. Brighteon has problems because their owner is Mike Adams and he knows me personally and still has never talked to me in 10 years, never even reached out to me. He used my marches, the March Against Monsanto in Philly, for three years to build his platform and never even reached out to thank me for making him famous. So Mike Adams, if you're listening or anyone that watches this channel, tell Mike personally from me, he can suck it because I'm going to shut down his fucking Brighteon sham before it, it he claims he spent $2.5 million so far on that platform. Well, I hope the IRS is coming for him because there is no evidence of him spending even $100,000 on Brighteon. So, Mike, please watch what you say because it's pretty stupid. Just like your blog every day. Pretty stupid. Well, you and Ice Age Farmer should start your own channel. <laughs> oh, let's get back to library doc. Dot, uh, com. Is it library.com? Library.tv. Library.tv is actually um, a platform where content providers, and here is what I wanted to get to. There are so many of these platforms where you can put your videos up. It doesn't matter. DTube is a sham. Brighteon is a sham. BitChute is a shit shoot. And on and on. All of the video platforms suck except library, which is not really library. It's Libri, L-B-R-Y dot TV. This platform has been up for years and it actually has a benefit. The benefit is that you're in control of your future here. There is no owner that is making thousands of dollars off selling his garbage products out of the store. They don't do that at library. It's, it, it's, not, it's not like that. It's actually a platform on the blockchain like DTube where you put your stuff up and it stays there forever it can never be taken down no matter what it says but it's hard to navigate but the beauty of it is that it generates value the more I work on making my site better the more value I earn through library credits which are on the blockchain it's a coin it's a token and so far, no one has watched a single video I've put up, so there's that, but we only have two followers. So let's all come to library. If you're, if you're following me on ShitShoot or ba Patreon or Patreon or Bitreon or any of those other dumb platforms that are not library or Libri, let's just call it Libri, Libri TV, then you're not anywhere. Libri TV is the future. I guarantee it's going to be the next bump up from YouTube. Definitely not BitChute. Definitely not Brighteon. Definitely not any other platform I've looked at. Libri TV is the only platform that will stand the test of time based on my analysis. Now, I've been doing this for four weeks, researching all of these platforms. And trust me, everything else is a waste of time and energy. So please, I'm not ever going to publish again on ShitShoot or, or any other platform but Libri. And I'm going to take all the links off of every channel. I'm going to shut all that shit down because you know what? It, it ha has no benefit to us. Zero. This blockchain uh, resource here at Libri, simply from putting up videos, you watching them, you commenting on them, we can gain value in the blockchain. And the future, by the way, is the blockchain. If you do not believe the future of money is the blockchain, well, then you need to get up to speed. I invested a small portion of my uh, net worth into blockchain three years ago, and it has increased 10 times three years. That means if you put $100 in, you would now have 1,000. You put 1,000 in, yeah. You put 10,000 in, boom. You put 20,000 in, big boomer. Yeah. If you put $20,000 in blockchain, cryptocurrency three years ago into the positions that I picked, you would, be, uh, you would have a half a million dollars. Yep. 
and there's still a chance. I wouldn't buy into cryptocurrency just now because it's literally going exponential right now as I speak. I think I'm up 16% in 48 hours. That's illegal. But that will come back. And on that drop down, you need to get in because it will rise up and suck in all the fiat currency at the same time in the coming year. And you'll be left dry. Yep, you'll just have to sign your paper and be in the globalist. Okay, I'm the same as everyone. I get 20000 a year. Is that what you want? I doubt it. Now, take a look at this and tell me what you think. How, how, what is your timeline as, as you look at this? You know, what's the timeline you think before you can, you can put out some of this evidence that can really, you know, if you want to shut the media up or they say that you guys have nothing, when will you have some of this stuff that's, that's this hardcore evidence in paper and writing? Well, frankly, the affidavits we've already introduced are hardcore evidence. They're okay. firsthand testimony of witnesses who saw how and why the system was created and how it worked to accomplish the objective for Hugo Chavez. There are people who saw ballots being destroyed. We've got evidence from people who saw fake ballots being created. We've got all kinds of different evidence. And then we've got the statistical and mathematical evidence that's absolutely irrefutable. I mean, a coin doesn't land on the same side when you flip it 186,000 times. You can't just inject 86,000 Biden votes and expect anybody to believe those are real. And they're not. When we, when we the, see... No matter how you analyze the statistics, whether it's a predictive model or the actual data as it comes in, it, it doesn't hold water. And we've got other testimonial evidence that appears to be coming in now to indicate the Democrats literally added 35,000 votes to every Democratic candidate to begin with. 35 in, in, in any particular state or you say 35,000 where? We've got it definitely all over one state and I would be willing to bet it happened everywhere. And when you when you lay all this out and you're going to do this in court, uh, do you have what you think is irrefutable evidence that will that will make up the minds of millions of American people? Well, the burden of proof in court is only a preponderance of the evidence. Mm -hmm. It's not beyond a reasonable doubt. That's the criminal standard. But frankly, with everything we've got, these should be criminal prosecutions at a at a significant level for fraud and conspiracy to defraud. Yeah. beyond a re provable beyond a reasonable doubt there are hundreds of thousands of people in our criminal system right now in prison who were convicted on far less evidence of guilt than we have here Sidney mm. powell i want you to react to something that the senior this republican senator from pennsylvania pat toomey just said in reaction to uh, the district court judge's decision the district court judge is someone who's very close to pat toomey senator toomey says that president trump has now quote exhausted all plausible legal options to challenge the result of the presidential race in Pennsylvania. Is that true? No, that's not true at all. Can you explain why the senator's begun wrong? to fight. Can you explain <laughs> that? Why is the senator wrong? Well, he's wrong because Pennsylvania was one of the hotbeds of many varieties of fraud and criminal acts that the Department of Justice, frankly, should be in there prosecuting. And, and we're going to dump. Well, she's about to dump tons of information on there and I can corroborate her. I will back her up. I was involved in uh, election fraud in Philadelphia for years. I wasn't personally doing the fraud, but I was privy to the information on how the fraud was taking place. And the Democrats, and what they do in those uh, districts is that the people that are in control of the votes, they go to all the old age homes and they collect all the votes and they vote Democrat for all the people that can't vote. It's totally illegal. I watched it happen. I watched tens of thousands of votes in 2012, 2010, uh, and yeah, 2012 and 2010 uh, get collected in this manner. Totally illegally, tens of thousands of them from people that are incapable of voting that just allowed people to take their ballots and vote however they wanted. This is what's happening in Pennsylvania for decades. And I hope Cindy Powell finally 
Well, I hope Sidney Powell finally ends the scam because it's, it's long overdue. A lot of you won't believe what I'm saying. A lot of peop- uh, half the population don't believe what Sidney Powell's saying. I can corroborate every single word she says. I have data, I have information, I have numbers, and I kept it all. So please, Sydney, if you need backup, I'm there, baby. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when the world you live in is a sham based on multinational corporations, Citizens United, ending democracy as you know it. And we're about to show it. Be safe. We love each and every one of you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people and click on one of those boxes showing up around the boom and get smarter. Be safe. We love you. Democracy is dead unless we fight for it. No, no, no.